Today, we're going to be talking about seven Photoshop tools that AI has made obsolete. But has it really? Check this out. There's a lot of reflection in this case. I took this from a car window and this is just garbage. But just go to the remove section inside of camera in the latest version 17.1 and 2 and later. Have a look. There is reflections. Open that up and check apply. Wait for it. Oh my God, this is just insane. All I have to do now is to go back to the edit section here and maybe in the light section, increase the shadows or the exposure just a little bit. But have a look. Here is the before, all the reflections. Here's the after, everything gone. And we're not even using generative AI. If you're not able to see this feature, click here inside of camera. You need to open a raw photo for this to work. And then in technology previews, make sure this is checked. Hit OK, restart everything and it should work. Now, what does this replace? A lot of things. Earlier, we would have to open this in Photoshop and then with the lasso tool, select all of those areas, including essential details. And even then it wouldn't work. You would have to go to edit, content aware fill, which was there before, and then try to fill that. But this would not do it. Let me share with you another example. This is just blowing minds. Here's another photo that I took inside of the Louvre Museum in Paris. And as you can see, there's a glass that is covering the mummy caskets and there's a ton of reflection. Just go to the remove section, reflections open that up and just click on apply. That's all. Gone. It's just so hard to believe. And have a look at this. You have this slider right here, which lets you reduce the reflection. If you want it to be absolutely removed, take it all the way to the right. And as you take it towards the left hand side, more and more reflections start to show up. Now, what is interesting is if you take the slider all the way to the left like this, only the reflection shows up. Pretty useful for maybe crime investigators or the police. Another example is, let's say you wanted to expand this photo for Instagram. Let's press C for the crop tool. And for the aspect ratio, let's go for four is to five, right? Let's expand it like so. And here to fill, I'm gonna choose generative expand. Hit enter or return. The background is blurred anyway, so the resolution wouldn't matter as much. And there's not a lot of fill area anyway. And have a look, it, this does such an incredible job. Here's the first option. Second option, third option. Let's go for this one. So let's say this is the fill. If you were to do the same thing with content aware fill, here's what it would look like. Let's turn this off just above this layer. I'm going to create a brand new layer. And with the help of the rectangular marquee tool here, let's select this area, hold the shift key, add this area, give it a bit of space on the inside, and then go to edit content aware fill. It just wouldn't be as accurate. It wouldn't create the other parts of the tree. But all of these examples, do they show that the content of airflow is entirely obsolete? Absolutely not. Have a look at this example. If we were to remove this light from the top, and if we did it with generative fill, it wouldn't be as high of a quality. Instead, let us select any of the tools like the lasso tool or polygonal lasso, whatever you like. And I'm going to make a very rough selection of this particular area. Maybe create a brand new layer and then go to edit content aware fill. Where did that go? There it is. And have a look. This does such an incredible job. Hit OK. And as you zoom in, have a look at the quality. There is no loss in quality. This is just incredible. And it just works. For professional simple removals, content aware fill still has a use case. The next tool, one of the most classic tools ever, the clone stamp tool. But has it been replaced? Let's say you wanted to remove this chain using the clone stamp tool. If you pick the clone stamp tool, remember, clone stamp is simply a copy and paste in a brush. That's all. Let us create a brand new layer and you want to make sure sample current and below or all layers is checked. And here, if we take a sample by holding the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample. And if we continued here, it just wouldn't match. It just goes in another direction. But did you know that you can rotate your clone? Let's go back to how it was. Let's take a sample by holding the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample and then hold Option shift and the angle bracket keys. And as you press the left or right angle bracket keys and hold it, see this rotates. As it fits, you can just paint and remove that particular area. And you can do it with the rest of the areas. And again, do it with this area, do it with that area. But still, this is very time taking. Instead, just use the AI powered remove tool. You can even turn off generative AI by going to mode and generative AI off and simply paint over the chain. You want to make sure sample all layers is checked and let's do it. All I'm doing here actually is creating a loop. You can paint over, but this is just easier for me to ensure that everything is covered and it's gone so nicely. Now there are some angle issues here. No worries, just paint over those areas again. And there you go, it is fixed. Similarly, there are some issues here. So I'm gonna try to paint there and it is fixed. Similarly there, this is so darn good. Maybe here a little bit and there you go. 
this is all gone. We did not even have to worry about the angle. But does that mean the clone stem tool is absolutely replaced and there is no use for it? Absolutely not. Have a look at this. Let's say you want to remove the coffee mug right here, but that is attached to the hands. So let us create a brand new layer. If you were to use the remove tool and try to do that, no matter how careful you were, it's going to kill the edges. In these cases, you need a tool that is dumb, that doesn't act smart, and that does exactly what you say to it, like the clone stamp tool. So let us delete this layer, create a brand new layer by clicking on this button. And this time instead, let us select the quick selection tool here and make a selection of the hand, like so, super fast. Now let's invert the selection by pressing Control, Shift I, Command, Shift I, and then select the clone stamp tool. Hold the Alt key or the Option key and click to take a sample and just do this area first. Now you can add some feather, do it nicely. I'm doing it pretty fast, like so. Now once you have separated it, press Ctrl or Command D to deselect. Now you can use whatever you want. You can get back to the remove tool and now you can safely remove this. It's not going to be an issue at all. And bingo, gone. The next tool was very useful when we had a lot of stuff to remove, but not so much time to sample from different areas, use the clone stem tool or other healing tools. We just wanted to paint. And that was the spot healing brush tool. Now let's say in this case, there are tons of people that we want to remove. And this worked great. We created a brand new lab and then we just painted over the people that we wanted to remove or lots of little things that we wanted to remove. And this worked fantastic. But you don't really have to do that anymore. Not even the selection. All you do is in that new lab, just select the remove tool, AI powered. You can choose to keep generative AI on or off or leave it at auto, let Photoshop decide and go to find distractions, people. It automatically selects all the people, hit enter or return and everybody would be automatically removed and it did such an incredible job. Here's the before, here's the after, that's all. Thankfully, I was not distracting enough. Similarly, when you have thin wires or stuff like that you wanna remove, you use the spot healing brush tool. You created a brand new layer and then you selected the spot healing brush tool and it was easier to just dab once, hold the shift key, dab on the other end and it did a pretty amazing job. Do it one more time and hold the shift key dab on the other end and it just takes that away. But it's not very accurate. As you can see, it's just breaking the pattern. It's still going to take you a lot of time. Similarly, if you were to do this somewhere here, just dab once, hold the shift key, dab here on the other end. See, it's just not accurate. And with the new tools, you don't even have to paint on those areas. Let's delete this layer, create a brand new layer by clicking on this button and select our beloved remove tool. Zoom out and inside of find distractions, wires and cables. You wanna make sure sample all layers is checked. Click on that and it just all magically goes away. Have a look at it. Here's the before, here's the after. All of those little things, all of those complicated stuff, everything gone. Now it does leave some weird stuff, but easy to fix. Just paint over that, loop around it, gone. Similarly, paint here, gone. And it's all joining so nicely. So does it mean the spot healing brush tool is entirely obsolete? I don't think so, but to be honest, I don't use it as much. When you have to remove things faster, finer things faster, spot healing brush tool can be very useful. Like, have a look at the flyway here. You want to remove that, you want to create a brand new layer and then select the spot healing brush tool because the remove tool is going to be a bit slower. Select the spot healing brush tool and if I remove something like this, it just works super fast. So this is one of those areas where spot healing brush tool is still relevant. But apart from that, you know, the remove tool just works better in most cases. And with just a little effort before, after, all of those gone. Now our next tool may be entirely decimated and I absolutely positively believe that. Have a look at this. So here's a raw photo with a ton of noise. Let me open that up in Photoshop. And thanks to Gloria Anderson Photography for this photo. She was very kind to send me some raw files with a lot of noise and she's a very passionate photographer. Definitely check out her work here, show her some love. So if we had a noisy photo like that, especially when we increase the exposure like this, what would we do? We would scroll down, go to the details section and earlier we would just scroll down and increase the luminance to try to fix that. And it would be kind of okay. It would still lose the details. We would try to bring back the details using the detail slider and then add some contrast. But it's not entirely gone. It's just so smudgy. But right now with the AI powered noise reduction, check this out. So here is the image with all of the noise. All you have to do is to check denoise. That's all, it's gonna take a while. But have a look at the difference, this is just insane. Now you can increase the denoise amount here. So I'm gonna increase it even more, like so, maybe 76. And here is the before with all the noise. And here's the after, crazy, crazy insane. Have a look at the details here in the wings and the feathers. 
here's the before and here is the after. Now, if you were to compare this with the earlier version of Denoise, this is how it would compare. First of all, the colors would be compromised. If you increase the slider to reduce color noise, see all the vibrance and everything just goes away as well. Also, we would increase luminance like so to reduce it maybe even more and add some details like so and some contrast maybe. So this is the old version and this is the new version. It's just, I am speechless. Old version, new version. Now, some people for retouching would use the dodge and burn tools for the skin, but those tools and even those techniques are kind of replaced, but not entirely. Have a look at this. Let's say you wanted to first remove the blemishes. For that, you can take the time to create a brand new layer and then you would use something like the remove tool or even the spot healing brush tool, patch tool, whatever is your favorite and remove blemishes one by one, like so, and then the other one, but this would take a lot of time. There are lots of AI programs to automatically do the manual job for you. My preference and my favorite is Retouch for me because it works with Photoshop and I use Photoshop and also it is non-destructive and works brilliantly. And the best part is it is just a one-time purchase. So press Control, Alt, Shift and E to create a stamp visible layer at the top. I don't have to worry about credits every time I apply my edits, so that's a good thing. Let's go to Filter, Retouch for me, Retouch for me, Heal. By the way, if you want to test retouch for me on your photos absolutely for free, check out this link right here or check the links in the description. And then if you're interested, I'll also leave a discount link. Have a look at this sensitivity slider. It just detects all of those blemishes. Check make mask, hit apply. And all the blemishes are gone, like incredibly well. Here's the before. Here's the after, all of those little things are gone. Now for dodging and burning, both the tools and the techniques, you can again create a stamp visible layer by pressing Control, Alt, Shift and E. And then go to filter. Retouch for me, retouch for me, dodge, burn. Now keep in mind, there are other programs for this one as well, but I highly recommend that you try retouch for me for free. And here's the blend. So this is how it was before. This is entirely done and you can go beyond as well. So maybe I'm gonna go this much, 160, and you can add some warmth in the dodging and burning. So if you think some areas are a bit desaturated like this area, you can increase the warmth in the dodging and burning. I wanna create a soft light layer, hit apply. All you have to do is to change the blend mode from normal to soft light and have a look at it. This is insane. Here's the before, here's the after. Before, after. Now, does that completely replace your traditional dodging and burning tools and techniques? Absolutely not. AI is not perfect. You have to make changes. And that is one of the biggest reasons I like Retouch for me because it creates all of these layers which are absolutely non-destructive. So in this case, as you can see, this area is just too much. So all we need to do is to take the brush, decrease the flow to about 2%, and then select gray as our foreground color. Click on it and then pick 808080 hex code, hit OK. And simply paint over the areas which are a bit excess. Here's the before, here's the after. And I'm gonna paint a bit right here to bring back some of it. Maybe here as well. I'm gonna paint a little more right there to bring back some of it. It is not entirely replaced, it is not obsolete, but it's very useful when AI doesn't get stuff right. Now let's talk about sharpening and unblurring. Has Photoshop sharpening become obsolete? Does AI do a better job with sharpening? Let's check this out. Here, the face is slightly blurry. With the background layer, let's press Ctrl or Command J. Let's try Photoshop's version. Before doing anything, let's go to Filter, Convert for Smart Filters so that you can change the values of the filter later. Let's go to Filter, Sharpen, and Smart Sharpen. Let's increase the amount all the way to the right hand side and then slowly and gradually increase the radius and stop at just the point where you begin to see the halos. So I'm seeing halos here, so maybe I'm gonna stop right at about 2.4. This is nice. And then control the amount. Maybe 400 would be good. Hit OK. So this is Photoshop's result. Not bad. Before? after. Pretty good. Now let's test AI sharpening with this without any generation. I know there are programs which generate an entire face to replace this. We are not going to do that. So with the background layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J and place it at the top. And we're going to name it AI Sharpen. And for this, we're going to be using Topaz Labs Topaz Photo AI. It's one of my favorites for sharpening and upscaling. And you can try this absolutely for free on your photos. I'm going to leave a link to the free trial in the description. And then if you're interested, I'll also leave a link to the discount if it's available. In here, you can apply all of these recommendations, but to keep things fair, we're gonna just apply the sharpening, sharpen the subject. And oh my gosh, this is incredibly good. So on the left, you have the before, on the right, you have the after. I'm gonna leave it at that and click on export to Photoshop. This is our before, this is Photoshop's version, and this is our AI 
sharpening. Have a look at it. This is night and day difference. This is crazy. So does that mean sharpening in Photoshop is obsolete? Absolutely not. You can use it artistically, maybe less sharpening in the background, more sharpening on the subject, and then even more sharpening on the eyes. You can layer up sharpening and use it artistically. But as far as recovering details are concerned, Topaz Photo AI at the moment does a pretty amazing job. Now, what about upscaling? You do have upscaling features in Photoshop. Let us try those. So here's a photo of an eagle, right? This is not high resolution. Let's go to image, image size, and you can increase the resolution to about, let's say, 4000, right? And in the resampling section, choose the new preserve details 2.0. And this is not absolutely new, but newer. Hit OK. This is for increasing the resolution. And it does an okay job, I have to say, but it's not the best. You can even try using neural filters for it. Let's open up the photo again and then go to filter, neural filters, and then just scroll down and check super zoom. And you can zoom in. This is 1x right now. Click on this. This is 2x. Resolution has doubled. This is 3x. Resolution has tripled. Let's zoom in and have a look at the results. So here's the before, as you can see, and here is the after. Let's click here two more times. Why not? 5x. You can also check remove JPEG artifacts. And the great part is it processes on device. And it just makes it very smooth. So I'm not going to do that. This was fine. Hit OK. Now this creates a brand new image with a brand new resolution. And this is what we get. Let us keep it aside for comparison. So already Photoshop's old upscaling has been replaced by Neural Filters AI, which does a pretty amazing job. But can Topaz Photo AI beat this? Let's test it. I'm going to drag and drop this Eagle photo here and click on Upscale. That's what we will do. And you have several options here. Pick what works best for you. This one works best for me. Maybe I'm going to increase the dimension even more to 6600 or actually do a 5x zoom like we had done with Photoshop. So just for comparison here in Photoshop, we have the original low resolution image. As you can see, there is not a lot of detail even in the wings. There's some artifacts here and there. On top of that, we have Photoshop's neural filter ups scaling. This is pretty good. This is quite an improvement. And on top of that, we have Topaz. This is another level. Have a look at the wings right here. This is so good. Here's the original. Here's Photoshop's neural filter. Here is Topaz. This is just something else. Have a look at these areas. Here's the original. Here's Photoshop subscaling. And here's Topaz. There is one tool, one ancient tool that no one has been able to beat. It's been there since 1991, which was 10 years ago. So here in this old thumbnail design, there is this cutout of me. Let's just keep that layer on and let's keep a background layer. Have a look at the cut. It is just so darn clean and smooth and nice. Look at the curves. No automatic selection will be able to do it so nicely. Now this was made to go with a darker background, so I'm going to switch it to black so it goes nicer. But have a look at the cut. I wanted this to be harsh. I wanted this to be smooth. It doesn't get all the hair because it's a thumbnail, but still, this is just incredible. Have a look at the hand. Can you guess how it was done? With the pen tool. The pen tool is not about just creating accurate selections. It's about creating selections that look good. It may not be accurate, but it should look good. And you are constructing how it is going to be. You're the one who is in charge. Let me share with you the path right here. This is the one that I created. And have a look. If I select the pen tool by pressing P, see? All of these are created. And there's no tool that's going to be as smooth when it comes to creating the edge as the pen tool, because you are the one who's deciding how smooth or sharp an area is going to be. And the AI does not know your artistic vision. So if I were to start something like this, let's say I were to create a new path, I would click, click and drag. See this curve? That is something that you created. You chose to dig in a little on the inside. You chose to just give it a sharp, pointy end here and begin from there. You chose to ignore this curve and maybe go with a simpler curve like this. You are the one who is deciding the path. So this is one of those tools which has been absolutely hard to beat. Why? Because there is no competition. You are the one deciding exactly how everything is going to be. So that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. Thank you so much for watching this one. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.